What is going on guys and girls? My name is James and welcome back today to Roblox. How are we doing everyone? Welcome back, welcome back. Today of course it is time to jump back into Bee Swarm Simulator. Today once again we are in the test realm and today we have like a little bit of extra information about Beesmus but this episode is more towards on its extra plans past Beesmus for the next big content update. So the cool thing is is we've actually got a bunch of information about this and I'm I'm going to share this with you in today's episode uh, and potentially it sounds like there's some really cool stuff in development uh so yeah cool let's go three two one claim the hive how are we all doing um yeah <laughs> we've got like a lot of stuff now here this is the thing like this is the episode that i've kind of wanted to make now for the past couple of days and uh basically because of all of the b quip information we've been exploring that in the past two episodes so hopefully you guys have seen those we've been essentially you know talking about the b quips how they work you know what they actually do how everything is going to work in the game and i think we've covered pretty much everything that we want to talk about in terms of the actual b quips but as it did say there's like more information that we can talk about and it seems like on is doing it sort of in a two-stage update so uh yeah we'll get stuck into all of that Let's, uh, let's, sh should we go on the mushrooms? Mushrooms, mushrooms, mushrooms. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we actually, uh, I just went and checked the likes from last episode. So we set a 4,100 total goal, and when I just checked, we actually had 4,500. So we managed to get it. Thank you so very much, as always. Uh, you guys are awesome. Um, today, though, we're not actually gonna set a like goal, and uh, we're just gonna say, if you wanna like the video, then that would be awesome. But I have one request. It's a bit of a cheeky one, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, would you please please follow my account over on Roblox. Um, basically, like I'll be completely honest with you, <laughs> when you get 100,000 followers on your Roblox account, Roblox like sends you a little mini trophy thing and like every single person that I know has one of these trophies and I don't. And I'll be honest, I actually really, really want one. It looks kind of cool. It would be awesome looking in my office, sort of a nice little thing to look at. Uh, and yeah, we currently have 86,000. So if at any point you would like to follow me on Roblox, that would be hugely appreciated. And yeah, I'll link my profile in the description if you want to go and drop me a follow that would be really kind uh, and yeah hopefully one day we can get this little trophy i've wanted it for ages and i haven't really mentioned it but oh, i just i want the little trophy it'd look really cool thank you <laughs> i know it's really silly but thank you right okay so let's get stuck into today's episode shameless plugging aside uh, and yeah let's give you this information so i think what we'll do is let's talk about the beesma stuff first so everyone is obviously wondering when is this beesma event coming um, so the only thing that Onnit has said to date is quite simply, this was written on the 16th of August. So this was two days ago. And he says here, it is at least a week away. Only guarantee is that it will be out by Xmas. So if we use our quick maths, which I think I've got right, um, <laughs> if he said this on the 16th, that basically means that a week's time from the 16th is the 23rd. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Bang. Quick maths. Um, so essentially, the 23rd onwards is likely when this update is going to come out. Now, that's pretty much kind of what normally happens, and it's sort of what we expected. Um, but I'm kind of hoping that it does come out on the 23rd and not on, like, the 24th or the 25th. Obviously, you've got, like, Xmas Eve and, and Christmas Day and stuff, and I'm sure you guys do, like, stuff with your family. Um, so, yeah, having that Beesmas update out on the 23rd potentially would be amazing. So, fingers crossed, we get it on that date. Now, in terms of the time when it comes out, usually on it updates the main updates quite late GMT time, so, like, UK time, and it's normally in sort of the late afternoon early evening for everybody on the american side uh, that's normally how he updates things he never normally updates things in the morning for like my time uh, so i have to kind of stay up late and, and play sweet sweet business but uh, yeah sometimes it comes out early who knows but hopefully we'll aim for the 23rd of December. If that fails, then maybe the 24th. Now we can get into the juicy extra information. So in terms of how the next update is going to work, from what it seems like, is this update is going to be a purely Beesmus event. So essentially everything that's coming in the update is all going to be focused around Beesmus 2020. So on it here says that nothing is changing apart from the Beesmus events, although I have 
have been working on other content and rebalancing at the same time. I'm just hitting a deadline and don't have the time to test it all. So I've got so much information about potential stuff. So don't worry, it, do it sounds bad there, but I promise you it's not. What we're going to get is we're essentially going to get two updates over the next month or so. The first one coming in hopefully a week's time, which is going to be the Beastmas content, and then another update, possibly in early January, to do with a bunch of other stuff. And we're going to talk about that stuff in this episode. So you might be thinking to yourself, and you're thinking, well, what is this extra content? What has on it been working on all this time? And what kind of stuff can we expect in the next update after Beastmas? Well, on it here says that there are lots of things he's been working on, including new endgame equipments, the red and the blue HQ expansions, new mythics, etc. But he's running so be far behind on Beesmus that his goal is to just get the Beesmus event out first and the Beesmus Beequips, then continue working and releasing the rest. So this is kind of classic on it, really. <laughs> like it tends to take some time to get this stuff and uh, interestingly a lot of the stuff that he mentions there are stuff that have been in the works for quite some time so i thought i would demonstrate some of this because i get a lot of tweets especially talking about the red hq so if this is the first time you've heard about the red and the blue hq expansions essentially this has been in the works for a long time and there's going to be an elite area to each one of the HQs that you can only go if you hit a certain requirement. Uh, so yeah, let me show you. So yeah, here's the red HQ, and obviously the blue HQ is on the other side. Now, we've actually had this in the game for a really long time. Um, so I actually found a screenshot. This is from Beastworm Sim Leaks, and this was the first time when this was actually in the game. Believe it or not, this is actually in the main game. It's just you can't even access it yet. But this tweet was from the 27th of May <laughs> this year. So this is kind of just like a timescale style thing. This is something that Honest has been working on for a long time. It just hasn't come into the game. And to be honest with you, I kind of expected it to be here by now, but I think he's going to save it for the update after Beesmus. So I wonder if it's still in the test realm. This is actually in the main game. You can do this. And I've got loads of tweets about from people like pretty recently as well, telling me about this area. Well, don't worry. We know about it, but thank you very much for letting me know. And essentially, I wonder if we can actually do this. If I put my shift lock on, can we kind of show you? Can I show you? Yeah, there you go. Boom. <laughs> so this is like a, a hollow wall and you can see that on the floor it says 250 so essentially in order to access this red elite hq area you have to complete 250 of the riley beast quests which is the big bee that lives on the roof so yeah there's quite a lot of quests but if you do that currently it's 250 and if you complete all of those quests you get access to this room obviously you can't actually do it in the main game but that's how it's going to work when it's released so apparently i haven't actually seen this just yet but people were like super sus of one of the new walls in the blue hq so yeah on it like started the red hq and then just never really did anything with the blue <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of strange but apparently i think one of the panels is different apparently i'm not 100 percent sure i haven't even seen it myself yeah there look see this panel this panel has changed what is this what is this weird clippy thing can we see through this no <laughs> but yeah there's just this random white panel so technically maybe this might be the entrance way to the blue elite hq and once again i think if it's 250 of the red quest in order to get into this one it's probably going to be 250 of the blue oh actually speaking about the b quips i just realized there's one thing that i forgot to mention in last episode and essentially the b quips are already like super cool but there's going to be also another system where you can effectively re-roll your beequips to try and get better stats so technically think about it like if there's a really rare beequip which you get and super duper difficult to get and maybe the stats aren't that good at it on has also thought about that and he wants to introduce a way to re-roll that and apparently that's going to be something to do with wax <laughs> so i'm surprised it's taken so long to kind of have a beeswax system in the game but this is what he's thinking and it says here I don't know what he was replying to, but it says, plus the wax system, which isn't in there just yet, is meant to upgrade beequips, so their base values need to reflect their potential through upgrades. Oh, sorry, it's not a re-rolling system. It's an upgrading system. So potentially you can get a really good beequip, and then you can use this wax item to improve the quality of your beequips. So the whole beequip system is pretty big and pretty expansive, and I think it's going to make a lot of difference to how quickly everyone can make honey, take down mobs, 
and just generally upgrade their gear and get better bees. So I think ultimately it might sound a bit complicated, but I think it's going to be really big in the main run for like every single player. I think it's really going to help. My dog wanted to come and help. Why do you always yawn when you're on camera? <laughs> this is Evie, in case you've never met her. Wave at the camera, Evie. Look at this. This is this is my little puggy work. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yes, I love you. I love you too. Uh, yeah. She. <laughs> Do you like the bees? Are you excited for beesmas? Hmm. Yes. Is that a yes? Yeah. Excited for beesmas. Yeah. She's she's hustling me right now because she wants her treats. Do you want a treat? Evie, you want a treat? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> be right back. Um. So yeah, this is kind of interesting. Basically. The bee crit system is going to be kind of so expansive that there's probably going to be ones for like the coconut crab, maybe for the tunnel bear, but there's also going to be graded ones based off maybe the ant challenge, the stick bug, all that kind of stuff. So I was kind of thinking about this, and I think the easiest and the best way to explain bee quips, quite simply, is it's basically like an amulet for your bees. <laughs> That's the simplest way I could think about it. Essentially, you could upgrade a bee with an item. It's a bit like an amulet, and different ones will do different things, but essentially, not only you are going to have these amulets but your entire hive can have them as well so that's the best way of describing it essentially it's a mini stat boost like an amulet but you just equip it on your bee instead of you and then it's party time in the fields kind of like that okay so next up i want to talk about new bees so this is once again something that's fairly historical in the development but on it here says that the new mythic bees won't come out in time for beesmas and none of the other end game content will but I promise it is in the works, and as soon as I finish Beesmus, I'll work on getting the other new content into the test realm. So, <laughs> I'm wondering how quickly that's going to get into the test realm, because I think everyone's going to want to play Beesmus for a week or so. But essentially, I dug these up as well. And these are old screenshots. I think these dated from around June of this year. So I, I went and found these and on it mentioned two things. He says, one, I plan on adding a mythic alternative to Music Bee eventually to lower the Music Bee's importance. So that's potentially going to be another colorless bee because I guess Music Bee is colorless. And then he also went on here to say, where is it? It's here somewhere. Ah, there it is. It says, I'll say that the update I have planned, <laughs> this was taken in June, by the way, <laughs> not today, this was June, uh, that the mythic I want to add is a red bee. So I want to do the equips and I'll probably need to do a test round for the new end game. So this was essentially when all the red HQ stuff came out. We also had promise of a new red mythic bee and then later on a new maybe colorless bee. But technically, if we think about the bees that we've got already, we've got the fuzzy, we've got the vector, we've got the spicy and we've got the tadpole. It would make sense if that music bee alternative was maybe another blue one and then we've already got another red one so essentially we can have two of each color i think that would make way more sense but yeah potentially two more mythic bees being added into the game and hopefully we'll see those after the bees stuff they've been in the works for a long time so i think two of the things that we can expect is red and blue elite hq areas and two brand new mythic bees so uh, yeah i think unfortunately that's probably gonna be about it for this episode so as you can see, like a lot of this stuff, we did do a few things about Beesmus, but the reason why I wanted to do this in a separate video is because this is looking further than Beesmus, and it's actually looking at what's going to happen after that. So, I mean, <laughs> who knows when it comes to on it? I always say this every single time, and I think everyone's getting fed up of me saying it, but he always does such amazing updates. The only downside is that they take a really, really long time to come out. But hopefully if he's in like the groove and in the zone, we can expect the Beesmus event, and then after Beesmus, or maybe drawing to late Beesmus, maybe he'll keep them separate, we can expect all of this brand new endgame content. Hopefully there'll be some mid-game content in there as well, and some early game content. Hopefully it's not just all focused around the later stuff. Um, but yeah, there's plenty in the works, and I think as well, one thing that I really should mention, and I wish I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, is that the stuff we're seeing right now with the bee quips is not the whole Beesmus update. No way. This is one small part of the Beesmus questline and the Beesmus update and there is plenty more stuff which we do not have in the test realm and currently we have no idea about. On it is keeping plenty of stuff as a surprise and we are only going to see that when the event is live on Beesmus. Um, so yeah, until next time, thank you very much and I'll see you again. So uh, yeah, thanks <laughs> and see you.